friends, we're back. We're still alive. Believe it or not, they're all alive. We are back yeah, as we up. wind down in Waterdeep. We're getting close to the end now. Anybody got anything they need to say as a last will and testament before we start into these last episodes? I no. don't, don't let Rallyan take my shoes. <laughs> oh, don't worry. Ellie. With all due respect, I'm being serious right now. Screw you. Do not worry. Do not do not worry, friend Cassian. We will consume your mind, and then we shall wear your shoes. Um, all I have to say is, uh, hey, Comic Con at home for this for the San Diego Comic Con this week. Uh, looks to be really, really good. I haven't seen any D and D panels, but then again, I could have over easily overlooked them. Are they actually having the con? They're having the con at. home. Home, that is the big thing this year, which is going to be all virtual. All the panels will be available online free. Uh, some place, I know IGN is putting up certain panels. There's going to be panels. Like, someone had said that there may be some panels through Hulu. Not sure on that one. Um, Later, but, Lynn, yeah, would you uh, maybe text me some of the uh, links? Oh, yeah. No, I'll throw, I'll throw you the main links for the website and uh, get from there. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. I would enjoy getting to go since I'm a long ways from it and I don't get to go live. It would be neat to have a year I could attend virtually. So that oh, yeah. And then all, all the all the really good stuff is going on sale Wednesday. Yes! <laughs> and I play ESO and they're coming up on the summer set events. So we just got all kinds of games and things going on behind the scenes. Oh, yep. Yeah. Now, back to our D&D, and what is going on with our players. When we left off last week, they had just tried to bed down for the night after getting back to the Troll Skull, and spending some time there, getting their profits in order and what have you, and they were bedding down for the night when they, some guards that had kind of hung around dragging their feet at closing hours, turned into some bearded devils and proceeded to try and storm the upstairs, climbing up the walls, doing various things that they were doing in a creepy fashion. The team very handily took care of these individuals, so they were no longer problems. However, the guards had been seen in the Castle Lander livery, and it was pretty obvious that something was going on here. So after they did away with these devils, the and that's in the literal sense, devils, not just son of a guns, after they did away with them, they sent word to their various faction leaders by various methods saying, we've got proof and the Castellaners tried to kill us and you need to find out about this. Well, nobody came running. Nothing happened. There was this echoing silence from faction leaders and lords and what have you. Things seemed very strange because you would think they would be getting a little bit excited about the danger going on here. But nobody seems to be coming. Nobody seems to be doing anything. So this is not the morning after when we take up it's it's a little over 24 hours later they have awakened early in the inn and they are downstairs discussing why they're getting no response to their messages they're wondering what's going on and that is when we take up this evening is with them in the tavern before it opens. So I will first throw the floor <coughs> open to you before I take over the plot. If they choose to ignore us and perish, it is their own fault. I'm telling you, they're already dead. The Castellanters got to them at the same time they attacked us. Or maybe the good news of that matter, considering that they are high lords. By that logic, perhaps our contacts never existed in the first place, and we're all part of this Castellanta plot of yours. Or, more realistically, the the members of the Lord's Council that are on that are in their pocket block this. Well, I mean, That's what I did one. sent a bird. That is one 
very logical reason that two others that I've thought of. One being that they are being watched by the Castle Lanterns and don't want to make any moves to get the Castle Lanterns any reason to continue acting as they have. Yes. The last Who knows one... what would... Who knows what they'd do if, if things escalated. The last one would be they somehow got to them. I'm not saying that they were possibly bought off. It it could be a possibility. They could also be influencing them magically. Yes, if they... If my memory serves, it was likely that they would have... If, if they were sending guards and devils after us, then chances are everyone else is, that we've been in contact with is being watched as well. <clears throat> you got a fox stuck in your throat? We wish. They might be delicious. Of course. Frog legs, dinner time. During, I've got ideas now. During your various discussions and your concerns, Leaf has been drifting back and forth. She's the ghost waitress. They don't have ghost writers. They have ghost waitresses here. But she's been drifting back and forth, going over to the window, looking out the window, and coming back. Leaf's as concerned as you are. She's she's worried about what's going on. It's almost opening time, and she's worried about after last night. She's worried about who's going to come into the or the night before last. She's worried about who's going to come into the inn. She's worried about all kinds of things. So she's kind of wringing her hands in a ghostly fashion, going back and forth, looking just, the, she hasn't opened the shutters all the way, but she's looking, peeking out of the little opening between the two shutters and, and just looking up and down the street, very concerned. And she suddenly turns to you and says, someone comes, I believe it's Vajra. Thank you, dear. All right. So Kashin just uh, ponders. She comes Mary, up. I think we should over to the door. She comes up and raps on the door with her staff. Uh, Cash. We're closed for business at the moment, right? Or are we open? The moment Kashin will. Just about to open. Okay. Cashin uh, gets up from his seat and opens the door for her. When you open the door, give me one second to grab all these. There are a number of people with her. Not only do you see Vajra. But when he opens the door, I'm also casting Detect Magic. Okay. Uh, who is closest to me at the current moment? Vajra would be the first one in the door. Oh no no, I meant I'm I'm I guess I'm uh I'm gonna be near the near the bar area. I'm just curious if there's anyone close to me. Maybe the shepherd, he would be by the bar. Okay. Um, because you're gonna feel a hand on your shoulder for protect, protection from good and evil. Okay. Okay, it's more like this. You recognize Colonel Banders. Who is a colonel? Corporal. Corporal Banders, who is Corp now Sergeant. Lieutenant. Right. He didn't get the promotion. He is now a Sar Sergeant Banders. No, he actually has now. General been... Banders? General Chaos. Sorry, okay. um, he, has <laughs> he has received an actual commission rank. He has. They have, after uh, the last time you saw him, he'd been promoted to sergeant. And when he walks in tonight, he is wearing the insignia of a captain. He apparently Ooh. has Staget's old rank. Okay. This has been very sudden and very unusual that he would be promoted this fast. So obviously, things that have been going on have affected this. Behind him, there are three guards. Alongside Vajra is Esvel. Uh, your detect magic that you uh, cast, Shepard, pings, but on Vajra and not abnormally so. 
Basically, she is surrounded by wards and various things at all times, and it definitely pings on her. None of the others have any illusions or anything <clears throat> up that is abnormal. Okay. Hi, Cos. Hi, Staggy. Moving up in the world, huh? Vander's kind of grins at you and then puts on a straight face and kind of looks at Vajra like, I've got to do, do duty here. So he just kind of goes straight and very official for a moment to, to handle the things. And uh, Vajra turns at the door. The Asvel comes on into the tavern inside. And Vajra turns to the door and outside with the door open, she's speaking outward. And the four guardsmen are outside on the porch. And she says in an abnormally loud voice, obviously wanting this to kind of resonate outward, she goes, Captain, put these guards in front of the place. I want this place closed down now. And he says, he salutes her and says, yes, ma'am. And the guards go out, form a line at the, off the porch in front of the porch so no one can get up any of the stairs and just basically form a line. So Cashin closed off. Sorry. Cashin will uh, play along and uh, make a mix of noise. It's like, what, what are you doing this? What? As the door close, as the door closes, uh, and as soon as that goes on, he just says, uh, okay, so and Vajra I think we got had, your silent signal last night. Right, and as Vajra had yelled this off the porch and people had kind of stepped forward, she would kind of raised her hand off camera, shall we say, outside of the view of people outside. Just a soothing hand indicating don't, don't get too upset. And she closes the door behind her. She again holds her hand up like she wants silence. And she proceeds to do a detect magic. Uh, uh, Shepard can sense this very powerful detect magic spell that she does on the end. And she stands there for several moments as she is like searching to see if there's anything in the end other than the group of you. After a while, she's uh, satisfied with this. Okay, she uh, forgot. Detect magic wouldn't pick up the if, right? No, she's not okay. magical. She's a dead. Yeah. Okay, I'm just um wasn't sure if there's any magic surrounding her death. No. Deal. Excuse you, she is magical. <laughs> she's, well, she's, she's she's magical she's, in our hearts. She's okay. a magical other, lady. She's utterly divine. Yeah. We've been actually saying that it's an enchantment, so when she does that, she'll actually not notice yeah. the enchantment. Yeah. But that is not Which what is why we're not in... serving her any drinks. <laughs> but that that's not what Vajra is looking for. She is, like, detecting to see if anybody's got any kind of listening spells or anyone's hidden, uh, this kind that's of thing. Right. And so she just, she walks around using this, and eventually she relaxes as if she feels confident that nothing untoward is going on the end and she finally says all right i'm sorry for the display for the the pretense here but i need to make sure that everyone remains away from the end if if you would please clear the main floor here and she pushes some of the tables and chairs back to clear a large central area in the middle of the floor Cashin will help you with the chairs on the ground. Yeah. Epiphany will watch imperiously. <laughs> she then be walks over to the center of the floor where she cleared, right in the center, and she closes her eyes, and for quite a period of time, she is casting something highly magical, quite powerful, and after a few moments, what comes into view in the on the floor of the inn is a runic circle. What would I detect from it? You very definitely detect that it is a teleportation circle. Fuck. Sorry, pardon me, French. 
would uh, Cashin be? Would Cashin recognize this kind of spell? I don't know that you have that much magic, but you guys have been around mm. some teleportation things. You might kind of guess. Give me an intelli straight intelligence roll. Let's see how much you can guess from it, or an insight roll if you wish. Could I do an? Could I do an arcana? Yes, you can do an arcana. He'd have to do like an insight roll. And which I did. Yeah, you can intuit that this is a teleportation circle. It's magic. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty circle. Mm. All right. So what is your intent here, Blackstaff? She says, I am bringing some very important people. All of them are people you know, but I did not wish them to walk down the street. I am bringing them directly from the castle. By my... I will, uh... By my Sorry. instructions, they have grouped together, and I'm going to bring them all into this circle. Hearing that, Relian immediately uh, starts. He go he ducks into the kitchen and behind the bar, and within the, like a moment or two, he comes back with a silver tray, and it's got like drinks and little snack platter. Very good. Char okay, I'm ready. Pottery board. <laughs> He's getting ready to make points here. All Look, right. we're about to have guests. It's called being a good host. You're fine, Relian, and thank you for the thoughtfulness. I was actually about to ask uh, if we could bring up something. I definitely know I could use a drink this morning. All she right. the tray. She holds up the black staff, the staff that she carries, and begins to cast the activation spell for the runes and they begin to glow on the floor and just as she starts this she says if you choose i can hide this and it can remain as a permanent runic circle if you wish you may tell me later hmm. what you wish need to a do. rug and is it possible to move it up a floor where the more uh, private quarters are Perhaps later. Today we will have it here. I will see to moving it later if you wish. And so she starts then to cast her teleportation. And figures begin to glow in the middle of the circle. Whoa, no. Oh, yes. Um, I only recognize... Four of those people, I think. I recognize all of them. I recognize all of them. Friend Relian, we do not need to walk now. <laughs> <laughs> and Cashin is trying his very hardest to uh, keep a straight face when he spies the uh, man with the eye patch. Yep. Some of these people would surprise you that they are here. Specifically, I would think the ones that would surprise you the most are the man with the large mustache and the man with the large purple hat, or the elf with the large purple hat. Um, and in the center, having been surrounded by the six of them, almost as if they were protecting her, is Laero. And she looks around like she's kind of checking things and nods at the other six and they slowly move out of the circle and gather around the inn getting ready for whatever is going on so you now have quite a gathering in the inn anything you uh, want to say before they start talking to you well, well, before they get started, Nakri will grab one of the best chairs downstairs and literally offer it to the Open Lord. Jashin will just uh, just stare at Mr. Eyepatch. They are all... I can just buy the portal offering the tray of snacks and drinks. <laughs> they are all except... Wipe your feet! Laerl accepts some of the items off the tray, thanks you, and seats herself in the chair that Nakri provided. She waves her hand around at the group of those who assembled, and she says, I'm sure some of these individuals probably take you by surprise that they have traveled with me. However, 
for one reason or another, and there are many reasons, I could go to each in turn and tell you, but I will say simply that for various reasons, I wish to include these people in what has been discussed. I believe they will be of great use to us. Uh, I will turn towards all of those who are present and do a super, like, extremely light bow. And it's like, whatever assistance you may be able to offer, we are most thankful for. Laryl nods. She says, I will discuss a few of these individuals. Uh, Davil is here at my request. I ordered him released. I have ordered all charges dropped from him. I have by far sufficient evidence now to understand that he was not in charge of the recent faction wars and that they were in, in actuality raised by other individuals who seem to have been displaced by current major problems that we have. The, he had information which he brought to my attention in previous months. I did not listen to it at that time. I was distracted and did not respect his sources and therefore inappropriately dismissed them until your, and she motions at the six of you, until your information came to light and his information turned out to be quite correct. Brillian uh, summons up his spooky hand and he uses it to wave at Davil because he's carrying the tray. He says, hi, Davil. We got you out of prison. <laughs> we have much to discuss. <laughs> all, all the while, all the while, Cashin's just staring, like, not daggers, but something pointy at the staring at little, 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 little tiny rapiers. Yeah, you're, you're staring at Jarlax. We got... We, He's staring got, sewing needles at Jarlax. Yeah. Um, but Davil kind of nods uh, long-sufferingly at Relian when Relian says this. And like, yes, I'm out. And he responds, well, it better late than never, open lord. I'm glad you're finally listening to the information. Uh, Mert, of course, you know, Durnan doesn't say anything. It's odd that he is in this circle, odd that he is connected to it at all. These are movers and shakers in Waterdeep, and he seems kind of out of place, and he acts it a bit. He kind of stands behind some of the barrels and counters and just kind of leans on the counter, listening as if he feels like he's a fifth wheel. Uh, Melanon. Melnor, I mean, um, of course, is the leader of the, what's called the Blue and Green here, which is the, the Emerald uh, Enclave in this city, which also encompasses the sea. Jarlax, she waves a hand at, as you understood when you came to the palace the other day. Jarlax and I have, she kind of smiles at the elf, in a almost a smirk we have a long agreement regarding some of the things and he is giving us certain helps with the current matter he has reasons of his own that he wishes to help Waterdeep in its attempt to reacquire its treasury Therefore, I have included him in this because he has been able to help us in obtaining some of the items that we might be able to use in pursuing it. And he needs to be informed of what has gone on. For all of you here, your words, your messages have been received. And the various individuals here, she motioned specifically at Vajra and Mert, have come to me and requested my aid in what is about to occur. I am convinced that the Castellanters are planning something most devious and evil in this city. However, 
we cannot approach them directly. We called in the Lady Castellanta regarding the incident at the inn the other night. She proclaims that the soldiers acted on their own, that had she known that they were doing these things and that she were that they were such evil individuals, she would have immediately dismissed them from her service, and that she cannot abide such evil persons doing anything, and she wishes to pay for any damages that her soldiers might have created in the end by her unwitting participation in it. And oh, her, oh, oh her, her soldiers. Her livery, her guardsmen. You mean like this one? Relian's going to set down the tray, he's going to go in the kitchen, and he's going to start slowly and struggingly, because he's not the strongest man, drag in mm -hmm. one of the demonic corpses. Nakri will... Nakri's going to just sigh and just walk over to assist Relian, because it's like, no, let's not tire of... <sighs> don't, don't strain yourself. Don't strain yourself. <laughs> you, you mean like this one? Laerl kind of smiles, a long-suffering smile, and she says precisely like that one and she insists that she knew nothing of their activities she is aghast and there is a look on Laurel's face like she there's a half hooded look to her eyes that says it, it it was total lies I know it was total lies however Here's where we stand, kind of thing. I, I mean, can, can you charge her with incompetence? Because how do you not know you have a devil in your service? Precisely. Uh, really, I really have no I argument. Think, I think for the court of public opinion, the official word out of our camp will be, we shall technically overlook this no hard feelings blah 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 but we're still doing what we're doing and going back to that party well, what about you he points to jarlaxle you screwed us over can you screw them over i beg your pardon how did i <laughs> screw you over i gave you exactly what you came for what else did you wish me to do Kind of talking about the whole court situation, but okay. Now, you insinuated yourself into a matter that truly had nothing to do with you, and had things proceeded as planned, some of this would never have occurred. He looks straight at Nakri. Your beloved employee was working for the Castellanters. Prove it. I don't need to, my dear sir. I am telling you that I have not worked against you. I am working to get the funds for Waterdeep back in Waterdeep. And if you ask me what I get out of it, I get good works between Luskin and Waterdeep and I will benefit most highly, as will Waterdeep. We I already know what you get from benefit. this. Do you? I already know what you get from this. Do you, indeed. Shepard. Let us... Uh, speaks up. Mm. Let's... We... Let's not start anything over this. Trust me, I don't trust Jarlaxle any more than you do, but... On the matter of what happened with the court, I actually believe him. He cannot control his employees if they decide to act out against one another. What yes. I do have against him, though, is that he is accusing someone that we aided it as does someone not, who's worked with the Castellanto. It does not matter, my dear sir, whether I tell you the truth or I tell you a lie. I tell you that I am working for the city of Waterdeep, and it is for that reason that the beloved lady here has chosen to bring me along. Now I have agreed, and he looks at Leal, to throw my hand in to assist you in the fight against, against the Castellanters. 
If you feel that you cannot work with me to this degree, I will be glad to bow out. It will save me a good deal of personal danger. Oh, don't don't act like uh, don't act like you're going to bow out. Even if we tell you to, you'll still have your little. Knocker is going to raise her hand to stop the rest of her group. Anyway, but I'm going to pick up the tray and start offering people drinks again, even Jarlaxel. Nevertheless, Curling whether her you like it or not, I am here at the behest of the Open Lord. If you do not like it, then request the Open Lord exclude me and I will simply leave. I made no illusions when I said that I welcome all help. However, in the matter of a sensitive topic, do not speak ill of the dead in my presence. If we can agree to that, we can agree to continue. Then we shall agree to it. I shall not mention him again. I am telling you that you were unwitting side effects in a matter which would not have involved you had things gone differently. I think just, our involvement happened a lot sooner than that incident, but just one that question. Is splitting hairs at this point. Just one question, Joel Axel, if I can call you that. As you wish. What of your employee? Because before he tried, before he tried to kill that man, he tried to end my life some years back. I am afraid that he is employed to do certain tasks, which sometimes brings him up against things. He was not directly involved in the matter related to you, my dear Cashin. I'm afraid that was entirely the Castellanters. If you think I am a friend of the Castellanters, you are quite on the wrong track. Not necessarily. I'm... I would... <clears throat> like to point out that if the Open Lord believes him to be an ally, I will trust in her judgment. Moving Only reason why I'm not pushing on. Cashin just just tries to say something again, but just drops it. Anyway, let's, con let's get back on track. Laryl says, good. Are you capable of working with Mr. Bonre? I'm open I'll to his advices. I'll be keeping both eyes open on him. Our 43rd personality thinks he looks dreamy. <laughs> Mario. <laughs> One of them. No, Who knows? No. Who knows? No. Mario is two. Wait, Sabio? <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Lord, no. Sorry. <laughs> uh, oh, I, wouldn't, I, I wouldn't put it past him. Yeah. Candy eating freak. <laughs> Jarlaxle just leans over on the counter, kind of like, all right, let's get on with this kind of attitude. And proceed, Laryl. I have no time for fools. And uh, she holds up a hand, knowing that his words will probably set off things, and she kind of holds up a hand and says, let us proceed. There are reasons that each one of them are here, and every one of these individuals are among the numerous lords and ladies who were invited to the party tomorrow night. They have all agreed to assist us in making sure that Hopefully, we all survive the evening. They have certain abilities regarding uh, countering poisons. They have certain abilities in fighting. They have numerous things that they can do to assist us in the matter. And we are all going to be attending, myself included. However, none of the others will know that they are in danger outside of 
a hint that there have been some rumors that something bad might happen at the party, but no insinuation that it is the Castle Anters themselves. I have to keep it very much under wraps. Understood. For what it is worth, and, um... Hold on, uh, sorry, small OOC break. Uh, guys, quick, quick thing I should have asked in chat, but, um... Should I mention our destination and the need to get there? Uh, Not okay. why, but just just that we need to get into the basement. Uh, that would imply can... that we've been there already. I would say let's hold off until I was, it may I seem was... like it's a good idea. Because right now we they don't know about the keys. We They probably don't know that we need to get there to activate the key. Well, no, I'm, that's what I'm saying. I'm not going to say the why. We just we have reason to need to get into the basement underneath the castle, and then, then leave it at that. Will, but then they will ask. Then they will ask why. <laughs> ah, I that's know, what I'm. Well, there's any I can, ideas, yes. uh, I can give an answer as to why. So hold, if you do bring wait, that up, uh, if they ask Ruth why, Ruth is I'll, I'll trying ask. to talk. Hold on, just a moment. I need to clarify. When you say basement, yes. Lynn, are you talking about the basement under the castle landers or the basement down to the vault of dragons? The basement of the castle landers, where we have to go to break that statue. All right, you have like, been fairly honest with your faction leaders that yeah. there is a, 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 a abyssal cult under mm -hmm. the castle landers. Now, yeah. obviously, this group believes you. Yeah. Therefore, hiding the fact that you need to get into a basement to destroy an abyssal cult is kind of counterproductive. That's, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm not saying that we're going there specifically to activate the key. I'm saying we're going there because we have to get to the basement. They can help cover for us. They just say that you're just going down there to to, to, to disrupt the ritual. That's yeah. all that needs like, to be said. I mean, they that, know that's, devils yeah. are involved with the castle enters. They know that apparently there is a temple on the grounds that is involved with the worship of Asmodeus. And mm -hmm. they will not be at all surprised that your main impetus is to get in and destroy that cult. Forget yeah. the sword. That, that You know, that's okay. There's a yeah, sword no. in this. Yeah. But Yeah, I just I Mace, just wanted to double check. Me, I just wanted to double. Uh, at this point, like I'm trying not to make too many leaps ahead of my own party without checking with them first. So my apologies for the OOC on that. That's just like my main concern. Well, it's just, like, to, I don't want to do something and. Yeah, we have to clarify yeah. what's going on and what yeah. info you have, what info they have, mm -hmm. and this is. Yeah. It was good to clarify it. So yeah, you now okay. know that. Just an example. We have reason to believe that our main objective is going to lie within the basements of the Castle Andrew Castle. We may need assistance to get there. That is precisely why I have brought this team. Waterdeep's 11. <laughs> <laughs> More like, uh... Harbor's 11. Actually, I love that movie. Uh, this is the point of why they are here. This group, mm. what you see here in your inn, are the only ones that I can be certain have reasons not to work with the Castle Enters, but instead to work for either their own purposes, in the case of Mr. Bonrick, and I know what his own purposes are, be that as it may, they will work in our favor. The rest of these have their own reasons for being involved and my own reasons for trusting them. I wish them to be there. I wish them to be armed in their own ways. They have various methods of being armed and I wish them all to work for you to ensure that you are able to get where you need to go to destroy the ritual and to end this cult for once and for all in this city. Knocker will look here. back and back and forth between the group and just nod 
the basement. We need to get to the basement. Then they will be your blockade to ensure that you get there. Uh, sh uh sh look at Shepard. Um, uh, and you were certain about the location on what you sensed when we walked into the place? Indeed. Referring back to the location of well, potentially one of the demons. Devils. Devils, Indeed. demons, whatever. The fiends. Somewhere upstairs, whether it's the second floor or possibly any floor higher if there is. I will caution you, O.O. Seeley, as a DM, that uh, I will give you a piece of information that the one that you sensed is capable of either moving or being moved, so don't get too locked in. But It might just not be there, yeah. It might not, yeah, it might not be and there. And it will be a random roll at the night of the party. I'll give you that. <laughs> Try. <laughs> no, it may have moved since then from our first encounter with the Castle Lanterns, but there Dice. is a powerful devil inside Dice the Castle Lanterns. Very well. With that in mind, I wish to inform you what each of these individuals are capable of so that you may trust them to a little bit greater degree than perhaps you do at this point. And DM is now going to activate, activate special powers. Um, <laughs> you are going to be getting, let me... Show to players. There is a handout under players called NPC Fighters. Yep. And it has a list of individuals that will be at the party on party night. Yay, party. You can look these over in this coming week so that you can understand how they'll do. And I'll explain how this is going to work. Apple's kind of familiar with it, more or less, how it works. Mine's just a little bit different than the way he ran his, but pretty much the same. Basically, you have a well of NPCs that will be at the party, partying with you, moving around in the party, and you can... When things start going down, you can activate them to use certain legendary powers that each of them will have. So you will be able to out take out somebody or interfere with somebody. They can either use their legendary power or they can actually physically intercept an individual to take a hit for you. In my game, they have two actions that they will take over the course of the evening. They can intercept on a turn, or they can use their legendary power on a turn, not both. It, with a few exceptions, Jarlaxel does not have an intercept. Jarlax will not throw his body in front of you to defend you. That's not, As is his nature. Yes, that's not in his. That's fair. I can, that's respect, not I can respect that. Do. However, mm -hmm. he has some double abilities otherwise. He still has two things he can do. It, intercept is not one of them. Jalester is pretty legendary. He has a single, very large action intercept in which he will intercept and attack at the same time. So basically, you are using both of his moves at once it, when you use him, because he's a major fighter in what he is doing. Um, you'll notice that there are others that will be at the party that are not here in front of you, no, most notably being the fact Cap, uh, Captain Banders is outside right now, but he will be at the party. He, ha he will be able to do some intercept for you. 
And Vincent Trench will also be at the uh, party. He has some very unusual abilities. They have only been distantly hinted, hinted at over the course of this game. He has far more abilities than you have ever uncovered. Mm. So, so, it lo so it looks like they can either intercept to take a hit for us or use whatever their attack list it is. Yeah, basically one or the other in a round. And when they've used up their two actions, an intercept and a legendary action, they're done. They're off the playing field. As, and is it is it one and the other, or is it like we could use, say, SVL for two intercepts? No, it's one. Uh, one and... The box will be, it's like a spell sheet. You'll have used up her spell called intercept. That's off the board. Now she Got can it. do her legendary spell. And once both of those are off the board, she's off the board. So she will be down and intercept once she's used it and has only her legendary left. So this, mm. is, this is how we will do it. I'll put this on the screen so anybody who's watching the video can see what I've done here. I've listed each one of the, the NPCs and what actions that they are able to do. I've listed their armor class and their hit points so you have some idea of how much damage they can take, how hard they can hit, etc. So you have it, and it lists their specific ability that they can do. Not surprised. Uh, lateral silver hand has the most health. Yep. So Laryl says, as she goes around each one of them, and she is basically, as she's talking about them, she's introducing their specialties what they are able to do, and you discover that they have a lot more abilities than you thought some of them did. For example, she seems to describe Mert in rather glowing terms and his ability to use a rapier and what have you, and it appears that he's, he's a lot more light on his feet than he would appear when you just simply look at him. So it's kind of interesting to uh, listen to these things. Why she has brought Dernan along specifically still is it a little in the dark, but she seems comfortable with it. He he's obviously someone that she trusts, so Cash will just go along with it, even if he is curious as to why. So she will talk about it and she says that Captain Banders and his guards will be there as well. They will be able to assist us. They will be there as my personal guard, and they will be in my livery. They will be acting specifically as my hands. I have eliminated the commander from the overall loop of information in order to try and keep things to a minimum of what he is able to do. I have promoted him to commander for one reason and one reason alone. It places him directly under my eye. I know when he comes and when he goes. I know who he speaks to, and I know what information he receives since his duty is to receive orders directly from me. Cashin nods in understanding now. In other words, keep your enemies very keep your enemies closer. Yes. In other words, I have promoted him into ineptitude. Now that one might see as a victory on their part is actually a loss. Interesting. Precisely. Water deep politicking at its finest. I love it. This is the game as it is played. Now we have assuaged some of the fears of the castle enters regarding your complaint regarding their individual soldiers who attacked the inn. We have made them feel we agree with them that it was simply a horrible misunderstanding and we will see to it that the castle enters pay an appropriate sum to provide restitution and all will be satisfied they ha will have no further problems with the matter. 
Is it about me? Your matter with the Castellanters. They well, murdered my wife. They did indeed, sir. And once this is over, I intend to rectify several matters that the Castellanters appear to have done. Not the least is you, Mr. Cashin. I. Yourself. Yourself, yes. I understand I have some restitution to do on that matter as well. And if you will stick with me and my decisions until this party is over and we can see if they win or Waterdeep wins, then I will see to it that matters are repaired. I will defer to your judgments, open lord. Say anything. Now, are there any questions you wish to ask of me before the Black Staff? And uh, Vajra kind of glances up at this. You don't realize this, but this is the first time Laerl has directly to her face referred to her as the Black Staff. Aww. I just have a single request, and it is from all of you. I think you... Shepard will agree with me. The twins need to be taken to safety as soon as possible. Ah, yes, that yes. matter. Thank you, Tiffany. Please inform me, what are you referring to? I'm Ter referring to... Terenzio and Elzer... El and El Elzerina? Elzerina. It's pronounced Elzerina. Ah, the Castle Enter twins. Beautiful yes. children. It is a shame that they are involved in such a heinous family. Why do you particularly wish to protect them? They are of divine blood. When I detected the devilry that was inside the Castle Enter, I detected two celestial beings, and those two happen to be the twins. They are of my... Our creator had an attachment to them. How very, very strange they... what fate delivers. These two twins that were caught up in this turn out to be something entirely different. Why do they not have the evil of their parents? What is the difference? They have not been sold yet. You bring up interesting questions. You bring up questions to my mind of the many, many disappearances in the Castellanter family. One has to wonder if all the stories are true. But instead they were sold, as you put it? I do not know. Perhaps our friend here I was here referring knows to more. Epiphany. Perhaps our friend here, Epiphany, knows more about it. We uh, apologize if we said anything odd. I see. Very well. We will take caution not to harm the twins. They, I agree, are beautiful children. I would be saddened if they were injured or deeply involved in this. If the running theory is true and they are meant for sacrifice, then our priority is to deliver them to safety at all costs. Not, well, not all costs, but a high priority. Indeed. Mm -hmm. The more I find out about this, the more I find questions than answers. I get one answer and find five questions. It is disturbing. This is the world of Waterdeep. Welcome, welcome to the maze that is my mind. <laughs> <laughs> it 
Well, with that said, I will go finish preparing my costumes, as will the others. They will all be costumed, as I assume you will be. Oh, I'll be utter, I'll be an utter eye catcher. I'm sure we will take them by storm, one way or another. Mm, bodies robed, faces shrouded. Fancy clothes, faces powdered. <laughs> you missed your calling, Mr. Ellion. You should have been a bard. I have a brother who's a bard. He's doing quite well for himself. Yes, Bell mutters, if you don't count all the broken hearts. I, I thought that was part of being a bard. Is, is he is he a what? <laughs> May just... Timora shine on us with her <laughs> fortune. As will the Lord mask and all of the darker dealings, says Esbel. With that, Laerl stands, puts her empty glass and plate on the counter and says, Shall we? Does anyone wish to have anyone remain, or shall I have the Blackstaff return us to the castle? I do have one question. All right. What, what are we supposed to do with these? He, he points to the bearded devil body. Burn them if they will burn. Destroy them. Destroy all evidence for now. Your evidence Happy is get the known. hacksaw. <laughs> I will not touch those things. I didn't ask you to touch them. I asked you to get me the hacksaw. I will have nothing to do with it. You can give them to me. Dispose. I don't want any word of this getting out for now. I want... The castle enters to believe that their ruse worked entirely, that it has faded into distant memory, and that they are free to enact their plan, because we must catch them in the act of doing whatever it is they plan. There's... Hmm. Varys begins to speak and then stops. What's wrong, Varys? Nothing. Melanor looks over at you. What is the problem? Um, I have recently taken to trying to think before I speak. Always, <laughs> Always a wide eye action because sometimes they can be misinterpreted as humorous statements or even threats. A thing I learned when I was young myself. My loose lips, such as they are, have gotten me into trouble a fair few times both with my own compatriots here and with others. <laughs> <laughs> Cashin just makes a strangling gesture at Varys. Learning experience for him. Yes. Well, very well. We shall see what will happen, Melanor says. In the meantime, if you have no questions for me, Varys, I will go back and prepare my sea costume. I look forward to seeing yours. If uh, Mirth is walking by, I'm watching him almost expectantly. Did you just flirt? <laughs> I ignore Relian. Talking to Varys. He did. Oh, the, young he did. One, the young one attempted to flirt with the ruler of the city. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even... <laughs> oh no. Wait, I thought that was Melanor that said that. Yeah. Giant clawed yeah. hand comes down on uh, Varys's shoulder. We are proud of you. 
What happened? A, gl a, a gloved hand comes down on his other shoulder. Me too. <laughs> Why are you touching me? You have been adopted temporarily. Just go with it. That's the same. I'm so so just... curiosity, what will your parents you accept have, for you? You now have four dads. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and an uncle. Oh, yeah. no. So, so what Run. will it take for me to buy you from your parents? I don't no. think that they're going to accept that. Oh. We'll discuss oh, this later. Goodness. Anyways, does Merc say anything or does he look at me? He looks at you and winks a conspiratorial wink. Like, we're going to take, we're going to do this. <sighs> Merc is ride or die. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and with that, Laerl steps into the uh, the center of the circle and motions for the others to gather around. Vajra steps back, prepares to activate the circle again. She's going to leave the same way she came. But in the process of what they have done, no one knows that anyone but her came into the inn, so they have managed to keep everything pretty well under wraps with this. So they all step in around Laerl again, and the um, spell is activated, and they all proceed to slowly flicker out like a Star Wars, Star Trek movie, and they fade away, scattering my bones <coughs> like atoms all over the universe, Jim. Um, Beam me up, Spocky. Yeah. Oh, God. Nope, I just want to see you. Uh, no, he's not angry. No. And with that, they fade away, and Vajra says one more time, anything else you wish of me before I return as I came? Is there a way to shield this place from any scrying? Certainly, we can. We can coat it in lead. I'm <sighs> not sure how... I would not recommend that. How much time we have to do such a massive undertaking, young one. I think magical wards would be better. I will see to it before I leave. She looks around to see if anybody else has anything, and once you have finished with any requests of her, she will go around and place wards on each of the walls and ceilings and floors all the way up, however far you allow her to go in the end, she'll place wards. To the tippy tippy top. Yeah, do it up all. Um, at this point, I'm just like, yep, nope, not that, not that again. If you are to go into our chamber, we apologize. Pardon the mess. <laughs> pardon, pardon, Bless the this mess. Par, pardon the body our, parts. The, our, our, our farm is is well matured. <laughs> you do not have to go in there, Cassian. Vein leaper. Don't worry, there'll be some vein leaping at the party. Good. It has been too long. I'm disappointed. We we are disappointed. Happy, are you feeling okay? We do not know. As we get closer to the castle enters, we are experiencing odd sensations. Excitement, perhaps? Nervousness, elation. Take your pick. We do not know. Eventually, Vajra finishes her moving around the inn, comes back down, and says, well, with that, I will end the pretense with Captain Banders outside. Uh, Esvel, are you going to accompany me, or are you going to remain? She looks over at Relian, and she says, I still have party preparations, cousin. Do you wish anything from me? A hug, maybe. Rella's, uh, Rella's going to uh, go over there, grab her by the shoulder, give her a small hug, then look at her dead in the eyes, uh, and just say, be safe. I will say the same to you. 
we are going into the mouth of fangs, I believe, tomorrow night. Barris is going to wait by the door. And with that, all right, everyone. Th all right, everyone. Thanks for coming. Uh, wipe your feet on the way out. As uh, grab a drink. Uh, as she's leaving, uh, Varys will stop her, look over at Relia, and say, "What does his face look like?" <laughs> I, I'm I, I'm sitting here thinking of several answers I could give you. I'm picturing tool time. Um, oh, really, oh. hand, sure, the neighbor, hand, Mr. Wilson. Wilson. Yeah. Wilson, yeah. Relian's hand slowly comes up, and you can now, Barris, you can now feel it on the back of your head. It says. You sure you want an answer to that, kiddo? I have this image in my mind. I have this Do you? I have this image in my mind of a childhood with Relian. Every time his parents try to see him, he's like got the cell phone up in front of his face. <laughs> do, 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 does does our appearance unsettle you? He's asking Verisus. Uh, well, you take some getting used to. His visage is stranger. <laughs> oh my god. So, hold on, real quick. Was, um, was Varys there when we first met Esvel? Yes. I think yeah. so, yes. So, Theoretically, anyway. Yeah. So Relian showed his face... Uh, to Esvel to, you know, oh. tell her. Admittedly, Varys may not have been paying attention. <laughs> no, yeah, he's this... probably watching the butterflies. I've got this, I've got this, like, headcanon now. now that all of you have seen his face at least once or twice, but for some reason it's foggy in your minds now. <laughs> it's like there's he's a actually reason a false you can't remember. Yeah, you never quite remember. Were you it. cursed? He's you know what? Let's talk for later. Let's continue. He's a false hunter. <laughs> like I say, it's just like Mr. Wilson. There's always a fence or a, or a drink in, in front face. of his face or something. Oh, you, God. Never, you never see there, the entire face. There was this one episode, I swear, of Home Improvement where they had Mr. Wilson, uh, Wilson over for dinner. And the camera never showed his face. But for the, like the entire dinner, like the family was just staring at him. Yeah. Yeah, they were seeing him, but it's amazing. There's always like a bouquet of flowers or, or a gravy bowl or something. Something always in front of his face. Yeah, it's so amusing. Yeah, that's that's headcanon now. Like you yeah. guys have actually seen his face once or twice, but it's foggy. Mm, anyway. All right. So with that, uh, as Val waves at the group of you, says goodbye. Vajra goes out, and in the last. A loud voice says to uh, to Banders, "All right, we've cleaned up the concerns here. I've I've come to an understanding of exactly what went on. There is no further problem. You are dismissed, Captain." And he salutes promptly and takes the guards off in another direction. Vajra and Isabel head off where they're going. Well, that was interesting. Yeah. Indeed. We got that guy promoted twice over. Do you think he owes us a favor now? We'll we'll call him a good friend and let it be that. Yeah, I can accept that. All right. So now the floor belongs to you guys. You have costumes that need preparing. You are preparing for the event tomorrow night. You have one more evening to prepare for this. So what are you going to do related to your costumes and to any preparations? Cashin's going to keep getting, making sure he's nice and clean shaven. Barris stares at Cashin's face. <laughs> we haven't seen Cashin's face either. Epiphany is agonizing over makeup. I mean, seeing the face, it's just, you know, it's just scruffy. 
Varys is going to. Did the clothier said he was going to have our costumes done today or tomorrow? Uh, this afternoon, yes. Okay. All right. I'll um, probably get ready to go pick stuff up for. Varys is going to join Nakri. Yep, strength and numbers. Very good. So you head off to the one he had. There was one clothier that had four costumes he was making. Is that correct? Cashin, Varys. Mm -hmm. Epiphany. Uh, who else? I had the cloak. Nakri. I had the cloak and hood. Yeah. Yeah, Nakri. Anyone else in that group? Uh, uh, Shepard. Did you have him making something? He he's making me uh, a suit essentially. All right. Like, so, like like best suit. So, uh, Relian, did you have anything? You had something being made by him. Oh right? yeah, I had a bunch of stuff to pick up. Cashin, did. Did you have anything? Maybe everybody had something. I think, I think we all did. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I pretty much got everything oh, from And then that I gotta pick up the shop. armor from uh Varus's place. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, by our nice um shop will have the the lightweight tin sword, you might say, that they've made. Yeah, on our it. way out I also need to stop by Telly's. He made me something. Okay, very good. So you'll do the local visits first you go to over to tully's because he's the closest and then down to fire and ice shop so what what are you doing with the Abby. bent nail tully is my item finished oh, I, did you think i'd fail you of course it is uh the group would see tully uh hand over to relian a uh rather nice looking um staff that's as tall as he is uh it's got swirling patterns going up the shaft and at its head is it's made of like white beech or oak wood or something and at its head would be uh a white crystal it's it's not it's nothing like magical or anything it's probably just a regular white quartz excellent He smiles and he says, I think I did pretty good at making it look like it's the real thing. Maybe one of these days you'll have something magical happen to it. Relian's, Relian's face is now directly in front of his. That's the plan. <laughs> he slaps 15 gold uh, on the counter and then literally runs out with the staff above his head. Going, and... Wee! <laughs> <laughs> We're in a mood tonight. Yes, we are. Yeah, but like you guys, mine is completely in character. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. All right, so then you go down to the fire and ice smithy. What are you picking up there? Your tin sword? Anything else? Uh, Lacquered the, armor. The, re the recolored armor? Yeah, they put lacquered layers yeah. on it so that it looks like overlapping dragon scales and they have managed to make it have a fair amount of gleam without a huge expense of silver. Uh, it has been nice. chromed. Excellent, uh, excellent, excellent. I need, there was somebody or other that was having something silvered. Who was it? Um... I think I was getting silver put in under the nail, the claws, just to help give it a little extra There was sparkle. something, one of the other persons, yes, you yeah. had it under the nails, but somebody else... Uh, Epiph Epiphany was looking to get, like, a like a mock... Oh, sorry, I think I had me. <laughs> Epiphany was looking to get, like, a mock, like, a prop weapon from the uh, from the blacksmiths. From, and that's from fine. That's oh, yeah, the sword. A, that'd just be the tin sword, but... Uh, somebody, yeah. Cashin or somebody, had something they were having silver put on. I know that I do want to have my trident silvered. All right. But I hadn't specifically mentioned that up until this point. I will assume that you might be able to get a light sheen of it on, uh, at least partially. Whoever is typing, it's coming across pretty loud. I think it's Kyle. Um, the um, 
you can get a lot, probably your parents would be able to do that fairly lightly without charging you anything. Awesome. But, so, I, but I need to know, uh, I'll just be point blank. I need to know if you have silvered items. Shepard does not. Uh, no, I don't. I don't recall Cashin asking for anything silvered. Yep. Outside of the fingertips, try not, try no. Try not to say, gee, she said that, so all of a sudden I silvered everything. Um, but yeah, I need nope. to know that. No, yeah, just un that. Under, the, under, the finger, under the fingernails for an offering, that, that's it. Yep, I remember the fingernails, and I remember somebody else was silvering something. Maybe you did mention it, Varys. I don't know. It seemed like somebody said they wanted to get some silver put on something and it was going there was extra money that they plopped down in order to have that can done. can i take a glove and have them put silver studs on it no i'm you no no because okay. that's too much after the fact of when i gave you a clue yeah that's that's fine i just want to punch people with silver <laughs> <laughs> You can put all the anyway. chrome studs on it you want, but you but no silver. That's fine. I already have a silver <laughs> trading. All right. Well, I'm ready. So you are heading off to the after. clothiers to pick up your stuff, and you walk. The golden raiment. Yes, and when you arrive at the golden raiment, there. Epiphany will have to shape shift. <laughs> All right. So we would that. we would have given uh, yeah. Tiffany time to shape shift if we did. Right. Forgive me. We have to put our face on. <laughs> when you <laughs> arrive at the Golden Rainament, it is chaos. There are <laughs> costumes hanging everywhere. They not only had for the six of you that they had to make. They had many many costumes all across the city and there are probably 25 seamstresses and tailors in the shop frantically running here and there with measurements with uh, needle and thread in their hand something stuck in their hair like a pencil or whatever stuck in their hair they they look like they haven't had a, any sleep and they are really rushing hither and yon trying to get the last minute touches done on these costumes when you come in. At first, the the man who is in charge of the shop is nowhere to be seen. Can um, Epiphany through Golor check in on his enslaved tailor? <laughs> oh, God. All right, I forgot. He is in the back room shouting instructions to another 10 people that aren't even visible in this room. You can hear his mind frantically giving instructions. No, 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 don't you know that was supposed to be such and such as he runs around giving various instructions to them. Beloved, I've returned. <laughs> do you do that mentally or do you call yeah. out? I do, I do it mentally to, to make sure that he's he gets the memo that we're, we're here for our stuff okay epiphany has priorities with with this mind control stuff you, all right you feel him stop uh as if he almost feels someone looking at the back of his neck and he turns around kind of looks doesn't see anyone behind him and excuses himself with the flurry of of tailors and seamstresses in the back room and comes running out and takes a look at the group of you. He looks immediately at, um, um, what's her name? Mariel. Mariel, yeah. He takes a look at Mariel and his eyes light up and he says, oh, I just had the feeling you were here somehow. Oh, Mariel, oh, I'm sure you're going to be <laughs> so happy with your gown. Um, my associates and I are, um, would, would it happen to be, they happen, everything happened to be ready yet for our order? But of course, but of course, I told you they would be ready this afternoon. They are ready. We would, we would love to have them and make your afternoon a little less complicated. Ah, yes, we will handle that portion of the business and then we will 
handle all the rest of this? Oh, my word has gotten out that we are the place to come to for such things. But I, I never imagined what work there would be involved in this. This is just overwhelming. We told you. It's, we told you we'd spread the word. And you certainly did. <laughs> You're doing a wonderful job. Thank you, my dear. And he gives you one last longing look into your eyes and then dashes off and comes back with his arms outstretched, holding hangers with all of your costumes on it and begins to hand them to each of you and says, try them on, try them on. I, I must see my creations on you. Do you have painting rooms or just? Why, yes. And he points to one wall, long wall that is entirely curtained cubbies, small rooms that you can pull a, a ringed curtains across in order to give yourself privacy. Uh, well, so. my costume won't be complete, but you can sort of see it. Well, yes, I want to be sure they fit. I, I wouldn't want you to have any surprises, but I'm sure I took the right measurements. Please, please be my guest. Make sure everything is perfect before you leave. Right. Knocker will uh, check to make sure the cowl and, and cloak part fit perfectly. And this is because she's not going to try to put on that full suit of armor just yet. Very good. Anybody else just, doing a reveal? Mary Hill just cackles in there in her stall. <laughs> Cash in, uh, goes, go, gets his stuff in, uh, goes about, uh, changing slowly. Very good. Uh, Varus will change, however, when he comes out, he will be shirtless, and his lower part of the costume is kind of, uh, baggy and not necessarily looking good right now. He's, so he's holding it up with his hands, basically. Eight days. Uh, well, I told you that it's not done yet. I have something else to attach it to. It'll, it'll look much better with the completed piece. Paris, little boy blue. I'm, I'm slightly concerned now because first the flirting and now this. Is there, is, are you what experimenting? Flirting? The, 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 the mental image I have is just, if this was a movie, it'd just be a picture of six doors and just the audience. <laughs> <laughs> the, these, the, the, six, like the six pictures here along the 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 thing that we've got and each one of them has a curtain goes across and then pulls back and ta-da <laughs> that was cool. everyone's giving Varys that look like oh god it's not it's not done yet <laughs> Varys goes back into the stall and changes into his regular clothing all right, so uh, hold on just a second. What I'm going to do is, Varys, the part that you would show them would be these flowing like strips of waves and and moving blue and green that yeah. simulates the sea is the part that they would see. Yes, however, it doesn't look very good right now because the way it was made is designed to be attached right. to a harness that right. I have back at the troll they, school. Perhaps what they will should. have seen will be this, this, there's yep. this like uh, chiffon effect of blue and green that does give you effect of waves moving back and forth. So does Muriel show anything of hers? <laughs> um, <laughs> Lady Nakri. Oh no. Uh, Yes. We we have a I have a simple question. Um I, I showed you sort of what what I was thinking, yes. I remember, yes. That that would not be appropriate to walk through the city street with, would it? I'm going to uh remove <laughs> the hood <laughs> remove the the cloak hood and kind of do one of those, like, I'm friendship peeking into, into the curtains, like, okay, what's wrong? And to uh, see this Godiva costume. <laughs> <down>. <laughs> and then yeah. we did. Um, yeah, so it, it, it essentially, it appears as a like, the silver, the silver hair is extended into 
uh, the wrappings that she has. Uh-huh. And that's basically it. And Karishan just says behind Nokri, well, that is a very bold look for you, Mario. So oh, for the audience, you. basically, you. if you if you don't know what what he was describing, he had like this this ragged suit that they put hair pieces on, so it looks as if nothing is covering Muriel but hair. Although there is a kind of a suit. It's like a fur bikini. It. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is, Shepherd, is Shepherd doing a review? And uh, and Cashin yeah. has his own Cashin. reveal. He is he's dressed in a. Uh, He's dressed in a uh, red and gold uh, dress with a uh, belt sort of thing and a and a tiara on top. But he's also wearing a mask and and he's currently flipping a coin, which has the face of Timora on it. Very good. And I believe, I as I recall, yes, yeah, so I'll ask for the reveal. Let me look at one thing. I believe Mert was also. Wasn't he coming as Timor? Joaquin. Joaquin, okay, yeah. All right. So he, he'll be kind of similar in appearance. Heavy set guy in a fancy dress and long gold hair. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, yeah, and uh, Cashin is wearing a golden haired wig. All right, Shepard, are you revealing any of yours? Uh-oh. Yeah, we blinked. <laughs> we blinked for a bit. I think. We're back, but uh, we, we seem to have lost all of Discord for a moment. Yep. Just make sure, maybe, just make sure the your stream is still on. Yeah, the stream is controlled by something besides Discord. So okay. Yep, OBS. Has, yeah, it's, it, that has all nothing right. to do with OBS. It's just that our pictures went blank for a moment. Dun, then, dun, yeah, dun. Uh, Shepard does go in to change into his uh, outfit, and he'll come out with uh, tan slacks, uh, white long sleeve button up shirt with the, the blue vest uh, over it with the, the, the gold uh, filigree. I don't know, the like uh, gold lines going around all over it with the breast pocket showing a symbol of Timora. And he'll have a, well, he won't be aware, but he'll, he'll just have the outfit on and he's looking down, making sure everything looks right. Does it, does it look right? Cash and uh, turns over to look at him and Shepard would see that he is now dressed as Tyler Moore and says, you look wonderful, my <laughs> servant. So we have Nara a had me dressed like this several times. So uh, Brillian would be the last one in and out of the changing rooms. And as he's changing, you hear a variety of sounds, including crashing dinnerware and a duck quack. And uh, after a while, the door swings open and uh, out comes a, the hunched over figure leaning very heavily on the white, uh, uh, the white wood and white crystal staff, an elderly gentleman, um, with a flowing silver beard and silver flowing hair and wearing it's a, a silver mask. Yeah, he, has a, he has a flowing silver beard on his lower face and flowing silver hair uh, draped around his shoulders. And on his face uh, is an intricate silver mask that would, uh, with swirling designs that would almost look like wrinkles if they weren't so pretty to look at. Uh, he's dressed in uh, white boots with pointed toes black trousers, a um, blue doublet with white vest with a red sash tied around him, and a flowing white and red uh, trimmed cloak. And he raises his staff and clanks it noisily onto the floor and says, Make way, you lesser things! Make way for the great Azuth, god of spellcasters, lord of magic, and chief servant to Mistra! Nakri will just uh, give him a round of applause clap for the performance. Awesome. All right, so you all have your costumes that you are going back with when you return. So money changes hands. The uh, tailor is thrilled that everything fits. He's especially thrilled with Muriel, of course. And uh, uh, 
after he finishes looking longingly into her eyes, he he says, pardon me, my dear, but I must rush off and handle the other things. And he rushes away to handle all the chaos that is going on in the, in the business establishment. So you are able to return Good to luck. the control scout. Yep, Cash and uh, puts his regular clothes back on and uh, goes back to the troll and we travel back. All right, so it is now, by the time you had a long meeting with Layerl and gone and get all your costume pieces, it is mid-afternoon. What are you going to do as you finish up the day prior to going to the party? You have... Uh, an afternoon to prepare. Tomorrow you will be getting ready, actually, to go. Cash in will be uh, trying to. Uh, hmm. I don't know. Actually, probably just sharpening his rapier. Varys will suggest to the party that they bring over their friends that are not going to be at the party and have a mini fashion show at the Troll Skull. And Such I'm as sure. his dad's or Tully or And I'm sure like the those. patrons will thoroughly enjoy it. A lot of, um, most of them are not going. So they will probably feel like they're getting a little bit of vicarious entertainment of what's going to go on at the wondrous Castle Lander party because they are in awe of all the movers and shakers of the city who get to go. So you maybe spend the afternoon entertaining patrons and in general preparing for the ball. All right, so so Cashin will come back down and dress up as Taimora. I and maybe play would. some gambling games with patrons. <laughs> most likely, Nakri will not come down right away because she's taking her, not sweet time, but she's taking an appropriate amount of time to get herself ready because it's, it's kind of like, if you've ever seen one of those uh, cosplayers who do like a full body paint, I mean, you're going to have to turn black scale silver, so right. it takes a lot of makeup work. Yeah. So the whole like, afternoon painting well, silver yeah. paint. Epiphany, like, Epiphany will wash. assist. Epiphany will assist. <laughs> Take a roller <laughs> painter. Yeah, <laughs> hardly. Really, to breathe in this, you know. Relian would be entertaining death as well and serving snacks. However, he would be doing it very crankily because he's been in character this entire time. And one thing I love, Azuth is canonly he is a cantankerous, nasty old man. He's just God. insulting to everybody. Get get out of my way! Do you know who I am? I'm trying to serve you food here, and you dare block my path? Get out of my way! You have the beautiful Mistra being attended by this cranky old man. There is... Yes. Once he is able to attach what he got from the raiment store to the harness he made himself, he will come back down. It looks a lot better once it has been hiked up, flowing down from the back around to the hips. And you, you can got a actually... fishnet tank top? Pretty much, yeah. You can see that he has uh, woven like dried kelp, coral, uh, a couple of lesser gems, uh, maybe faux gems, fake ones. Um, basically, he's going for the full uh, theme. He has also applied the golden hair highlights as well as the glitter face mask on and is spending the, inter the evening entertaining guests with uh, shape water. He will be... Uh, whether it's refilling drinks with water bending or doing magic tricks or stuff like that, uh, he will, of course, invite Abby and Ambrick over to come and have a free round of drinks at the Troll Skull. And there is a kind of a party atmosphere in the city as a whole. You have a larger evening than normal. People are out partying in preparation for Misrule because Misrule is, shall we say, the jester's day of the year. Practical jokes are played, April Fool jokes, masquerades, costumes everywhere you look. Even those who are not going to the party itself will be wandering the street in costume. It's quite a costume party as a whole in the city, let alone at the Castle Lander party. So it's, it's quite a fun day before the more seriousness of God's day. 
Godstead uh, uh, just... is twofold, just to give you an information, their uh, lore information on it. There's basically two parts to it. One mm-hmm. is to honor the gods properly. They are given their due on that day, and you are to spend the day in logical and serious contemplation of whoever you are revering. The second thing is to remind the city of how um, nearly the mage war, the gods war came to destroying Waterdeep and turning magic into this heinous power that would have turned all into slaves and basically done horrible things. So uh, the gods day it is remember it's the the day that all of the god statues came to life and defended the city in the mages war and so, so it's this, like a twofold holiday like right. first comes the party and then comes the exactly uh, respect that's, right. that's actually, literally mardi gras that that's actually very similar to real life holidays that happened in like medieval times but usually it happened in reverse usually first came the day of like solemn prayer and fasting and you know being good to people then afterwards came the one to three days of right. non-stop partying I mean, to let loose you look at lent followed by the celebration of easter that's the yeah. the solemn followed by the joy but uh cash uh, uh Cashin made the right point it's like mardi gras where you have this huge celebration before you have to spend 40 days being somber and that's mm. that's basically what this is it's more like a mardi gras where all stops are thrown out there's there's a lot of debauchery going on, frankly, in the city during misrule, because it's basically all bets are off for the day of misrule, and then you t- atone for it for the next period of time. Stop, stop fornicating on our porch. There are children present. <laughs> oh, dear. Gross. Wow. Uh, Varys, with his rather slim build and longer hair, he, and his costume does make him look rather feminine. But it's, it's sure. like a it's like a masculine feminine. It's yeah. it's difficult to describe. Well, androgynous. I mean, androgynous. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. Sea elf type of thing. There, there's yeah. the elves are not as rigid on their. Uh, He's very svelte. version of it. Yeah, they they have a much more loose version of it than does um, um, the humans and so forth. They don't have real tight. And, uh, just to make something clear, every time Ferris would be impressing people with shape water, Relian would be doing his damnedest to show him up with control flames, like, you caught that magic! <laughs> and he starts, like, making the flames on the fires, uh, the, the fires on the lanterns and the candles and in the uh, fireplace, like, bigger and change colors and make shapes. That's magic, young and Ferris will make sure to put out any fires that really and may or may not accidentally or intentionally start i have a picture of a little globe of water running around on a table and a little flame dancing on top of it pretty much Jeez. <laughs> so uh what would uh i be so i'm i'm currently gambling with some patrons as time more would i be able to win anything um, I do not have any of my gambling sheets pulled out. You threw that one on me, so suddenly I don't have any of it. Hold on. If, if, uh, yeah, Apo, you probably got them more pulled up because Aha! you use them a lot more I've got than it. I do. Do, do. Do you want me to pull up the, the carousing for him? Yes, please. Oh, on the fly, dual book reveals. We are nerds, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. <laughs> okay, okay where, where are you? Uh, between adventures, yes, <clears throat> yes. Uh, it's one d hundred plus your level. So roll a one d hundred and let's see what you get. And then you get to add your level. And your level is five, <laughs> so forty six. No, uh, I already added the there. yeah, oh, so okay. it's forty one. Oh yeah, I see. What what what's your what's your lifestyle? Uh, I forget what the li- expenses you, thing is. It's a, it's but, a, it uh, says middle. you uh, recoup your lifestyle expenses for your time spent carousing. So, so basically, you broke even. You broke even. Yeah. 
All right, so you were, you what does that one, mean? You, were one, you, you didn't. You, 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 whatever you put in is pretty much what you get out of your break even. Oh, all right. You were one off from the whirlwind romance. <laughs> oh, that one is what? fun. <laughs> yeah, Mike has one of those. <laughs> well, actually, that's pretty Again, good for a Time Morris character. You win some, you lose some. Yeah, pretty much. Speak for yourself. My tabaxi wins almost every time. Anyone Not. else doing any gambling for the evening? No, I'm too busy, like, spray painting a dragon. Hey! I'm, I think I could. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm too busy, I'm too busy making, doing magic and serving ungrateful peons. Perhaps you should add to that. Shepherd, I think Shepherd. I should, since I'm, uh, uh, I'm wearing the... Timora, Timora. Guard, so. so just to stay in in character, you'll gamble one round. So do yeah. your roll and let's see what happens to Shepard. This could be fun. Hey. I closed it already. Sorry. <laughs> I, I got got to make you work. It's my night off. Just <laughs> <laughs> need uh, to memorize the thing. Okay, what'd you get? 75. 75. Uh, same thing. Broke even. Broke even. Okay. Uh, yeah, you, rolled, you rolled the board. Those are the boring ones. Yeah. You were both yeah. except 40, for the 41 to 80 is boring. <laughs> 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 All right. So the evening finally winds down for the group of you. Partiers are still in the inn. Nothing that you see untoward tonight you don't see. Probably the castle lanterns are being on their best behavior after almost being caught. So you don't see anyone that seems to be threatening. If anybody is there, they are very well disguised and slipping under the wire because any detect magic or anything else comes up empty except with things like people doing party tricks and such things that you're seeing in plain view. There's nothing hidden that seems mm -hmm. to be coming up in the inn. And the inn was warded against the entry of certain types of beings and certain types of magic. So if anyone was attempting to get in that shouldn't be there, they would have had a great deal more trouble getting in than normal. Uh, double checking one small thing, Miss Ruth. Um, Knockery's citizenship did that make it through or no i meant i uh, yes pardon me i meant to bring that with laero and i forgot about that aspect she okay. would have awarded that to you at that time uh and she would have said we uh, lord uh, jalester and i made sure that we saw that this was walked through in order to give you an equal footing with the castle enters. we didn't want you to be at a disadvantage to their power. My lady, I award you citizenship to the city of Waterdeep. Excellent. So, with that in mind, uh, she will uh, eventually finish, go downstairs, and pretty much make the announcement to the tavern with friends of the Troll Skull there kind of, kind of deal and they would like a round of drinks for everyone very good everybody hey. will dress up, dress up, dress up as there will be as a round of congratulations and people blowing horns and doing things to congratulate you on your new citizenship to Waterdeep good to know I do think the hour is upon us mm -hmm. shall we make our way there actually nope this is one night before oh not yet Remember, oh, one day before? Okay. You've got one more. This is, I thought this was the day of. No, this is getting ready. So you've practiced oh. putting on your okay. costumes. You've practiced how you're going to do this, and tomorrow will be easier and quicker because oh. you, you've practiced it. I, I would Hell. like to. Oh, okay. Oh, I was going to say, Hell, in that case, Epi's going to strut around in the outfit and see the reactions. <laughs> all the, I, you'll, you'll get wolf whistles and all kinds of things, stomps and cheers and... You know the whole the whole nine yards. Everybody will leering of both great. the of uh, course. tawdry uh, and the skeptical kind. Of exactly. course, of course. After things after things start to wind down a bit, I would actually like to do something semi-serious. Um, 
when things start to wind down and people are starting to trickle out, um, I'm going to going to start shuffling people and say, we're closing early, out, everybody out. Relian would be out in his normal attire at this point, and once the last patron has left uh, and the doors are locked and the windows barred, Relian is going to um, wheel out a rather nice-looking dinner, like roasted pig, you know, steamed uh, vegetables, soup, all that. And he says, everyone get your tuckuses downstairs. It's time for dinner and possibly our last long talk as a group. And the condemned ate a hearty meal. Mm. Cashin will start with the soup with some bread on the side. I'm, I'm sure you will have upshore the patrons that you will be open long hours tomorrow so that they can celebrate thoroughly because they will have been very disappointed that they were they as misrule was descending upon them that they couldn't drink the night away but you will have assured them that don't worry we'll be open more hours tomorrow you can get doubly drunk drinks half off tomorrow get out <laughs> The uh, Mistral special, right? The Mistral special. Mistral okay. margarita. As everyone begins to sit down and eat, and Relin will just mm. steeple his fingers and says, "Okay, so we might die tomorrow. Anybody uh, want to get off their chest or add to that or?" I don't. What would you all like done with your bodies? Sent back uh, home, I would hope. Eh, just bury me somewhere. We could consume your mind and continue your life. Nah. Uh, find well. find a way to bring me back, and if that's not possible, uh, I don't know. Send me back home. Probably won't. They probably won't want me. And if all else fails, just let Epi eat me. Friend Rillian, I would never send you back to Silvery Moon. We would consume you. But no, I have something laid out then. But uh, yeah, if you can't bring me back, just let him eat me, I guess. We... We will cease after our demise. So dispose of us in the most convenient manner possible. How about you, Shep? If uh, the worst comes to worst, what would you like to have your done? Buried next to my wife. Oh. So, uh... I mean, well, sorry, not to pause on this. Um, is there any family you need to have contacted? Hers or yours? <laughs> No. Yeah. <clears throat> Understood. Asbel and a select few uncles are pretty much the only family that tolerate me, so don't worry about it. Alright. I don't... I'm already okay. going home. <laughs> what was Nock about to say? Um, Knocker is like, I don't plan on expiring tomorrow night. That would really put a damper on all of my future plans. Mine as well. Oh, I'm I mean, trust neither am I, but but Epiphany like, is a fickle thing. Straightens and is like actually using a fork for once. He's not patricking it? No, he's not patricking it. He's actually, this whole meal, he's actually just been eating normally. So, knock real raise a glass. I considered all of you to be the most interesting set of strangers I have met yet. <laughs> she doesn't and say, I, I love don't... you all. She says, you're the most interesting <laughs> people I've ever met. And I do want to continue our business relationships close to this. After all, I may have gotten citizenship here, but, um... I have a throne to ascend to, and I desperately would love to have you all beside me. Well, uh, 
if it's you know if uh, you ever become queen, uh, trust me, uh, me and Epi will probably come and mooch off of you. But uh, oh, you'd be welcome to guess. Relian will Relian will raise his mug and says, "You're all a bunch of freaks and weirdos, and I love you for it." Oh. Knock, uh, knock her old Lena, Lena, Lena on the table and look at Relia and go, Be my royal envoy to Mistra. Oh, well, that sounds important. In cash and we'll, uh, we'll, uh, speak. It's been a long, interesting life for me, and, well, I have no plans to let it end tomorrow, but fate and fortune are fickle things. Luck may be on my side, luck may be not, but... It's been fun. Like they said last night's game, luck be a lady tonight. Varus. Mm hmm. And yep. well, if this is to be our last night, let it be a fun one. Are you propositioning me? <laughs> Varus. I mean, yep. you're assuming. If, if things do go downhill tomorrow, run. I'm not going to leave you all to if in my If they bed. go bad, run. We don't want to... I think what Epiphany is trying to say is if one has to survive and get out to warn others, we would want it to be you. Kid, you got your whole life ahead of you. You're the youngest here. You deserve uh, to get out more than any of us. Uh, some of us more than <laughs> others, considering the crap we've done, and Nakri's right. Sugar Scales here has got uh, one hell of a point. If we all kick the bucket, you got to get out to warn the lords that trouble be a Bruin. Plus, your dads are really scary. They will follow us to hell. They won't probably actually come to kill you. Yes, they yes, no, hold on. You said probably? <laughs> and that cow doubts Speaks, no. everything. Trust me, Varys. They would. Yeah, I have no plans. Maybe yeah, Abby, I have no plans to go to hell. Maybe Abby wouldn't, but I'm not so sure <laughs> about your fire, see, Dad. That's why he said probably. Yeah. See, the fact that you said probably just means that you don't believe that yourself. So you know, but just, look, hey, he's going to he's going to reach out and like take Varys by the shoulder. Promise us, if things go bad, if two or more of us go down, get out. Change into a bug and get out. GTFO, as I as I once heard in my dreams. I have no idea what it means, but just do it. Besides, and uh, Nakra will reach into, will reach into her sleeve and hold up a uh, roll of paper. Someone will have to look after the troll skull if we all go. And she's pointing it at Varys. You would leave everything to me? Well, we're certainly not going to trust it to Bolo. <laughs> Damn no. straight on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I fully expected Epi to go, Bolo is Bolo is just like a dust of push. Uh, that was a missile. <laughs> Harris will... I understand a missile. What did he say? <laughs> I can't repeat it. <laughs> Epi language. We tried to do a PG-14 strain here, so I can't repeat it. You don't even know his mother. <laughs> oh my god. Wow. Anyway. Yes, will gingerly take the deed and say, I'm giving this back to you after we all get out. How about you leave it behind the bar for the time being? Just That's a better chance. idea. But if it that actually will state my intentions to ensure that you have something to come back to. Something else to not be under the thumb of your parents, but start something of your own. You really seem happy doing the brewery and being able to help people. And this would give you the opportunity to meet those that you would be able to help and do what you love. As well as be close enough to help your parents. You, you have a real mm -hmm. talent for inhibiting the decision-making of others. <laughs> I'm sorry. 
<laughs> I'm not keep, sure keep. that's a good thing. It is. It is. Liquor people up and have them make bad decisions. It's the greatest feeling in the world. Oh my goodness. Varus. Yes? Be safe. I will, and I'll make sure that you... I'll do my best to make sure that everyone else gets out too. Like I said before, I don't intend on dying, but I am not blind enough to make contingency plans. So don't be the first one to die, or I'll have, otherwise I'll have to carry you out. How late do all of you stay up? Do you stay up all night? Or are you going to get a level of exhaustion? Or are you going to try to go sleep? Uh, we'll we'll get probably, to yeah, we'll probably go to sleep like right after the meal. And as the meal's concluding, Ro will just raise his cup and say, "My friends, to love, to life, to roasted weasels, and to Mistra's magical bosom, and to fortune." <laughs> Shut up. To ruining Asmodeus's plans. I can drink to that. Yeah, let's stick it to the king of the hells. That can't possibly go wrong for us in the afterlife. Let's do this! <laughs> yeah, it's not like he can drag us down to hell. <laughs> That's a problem for later us. <laughs> we'll worry about that. Nah, we'll worry about going. that tomorrow or next month. Spoiler alert, God. <laughs> <laughs> you know, screwing over the god of all evil. That sounds like a good idea. He is not the god of all evil. I'm pretty sure he'd actually relish in this messed up plan somehow. I don't know why. He just seems like the type from what I've read. Oh, I'm I'm so sorry. A god of evil. Gotta be specific. <laughs> yes. And an awful lot of gods there of evil in this, in this game, I'm afraid. And yeah. Gods who would like to be the god of all evil. They try very hard. <clears throat> fun, fun yeah, fact. Asmodee is just the most biggest, baddest devil of them all. Fun fact, if Asmodeus ever gets his original body back, he will become the god of all evil. Dun, but that's dun, an out-of-character game thing. Yep. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and look at the wiki for Asmodeus. <laughs> go no. ahead, yeah, it's pretty pretty wild. Um, the uh, So eventually, possibly a little bit on the late side, but not seriously, you guys stagger off to bed, possibly a little feeling a little floatier than usual because you probably were having that last drink, maybe the last drink of your life kind of thing that you can safely take because you're not going to be safely drinking anything at the Castle Landers. Oh, no. Um, Rillian. As, as we're, like, heading up to bed and we're about to go into our rooms. Um, I'm feeling odd. Odd how? Odd is in you're going to be sick on my shoes, or odd is in I'm about to stab that uh, Nightwalker odd? Odd, odd, odd is in I'm starting to wake up. Now forgive me if I'm wrong, but I could have sworn that once upon a time you told me that if you ever start to wake up, that might be a bad thing. It might be a bad thing. It might be a good thing. I don't know. The more involved we get with the castle lanterns, the stranger I feel. Okay, I'm gonna do something and you have to <laughs> promise not to claw my eyes out. I can't promise anything. Okay, well I'm doing it anyway. I'm a gambler. <laughs> uh, I'm going to crouch my neck slightly, look him in the eyes and say Savio? Yes. Okay, yeah, uh, this is happening. Okay. <laughs> um. Morel? Yes. Happy? What? Okay, this is fun. Um. Lawrence? <laughs> Go, <Lawrence. laughs> Yo! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like. <laughs> so, for whatever reason, all of you seem to be quite awake in there, um, which is very odd. 
more specifically, I'm noticing that I feel more like Savio in this instance. I'm having to... Normally, Mario comes through easier, but at the moment, it's Savio, which is rather irritating because I, I have that costume. Oh. <laughs> oh, this is, this is another name, really, you should try. Harko. I've, I've, I've got an idea. I mean, I could knock you out. Maybe Savio um, will go back to sleep. I don't know. I don't know which one is me. I've never been inside your head before. So I... Well, to be fair, you are you. It doesn't change which one is speaking at the moment. You've kind of evolved past what you used to be either way like ever since we met these clowns downstairs um i've noticed changes in epi and savio you are uh sure as hell not the castle lantern you used to be so uh, uh i don't know who what and why you are is kind of up in the air for you to decide right now. You're at a crossroads, my friend, and uh, it's time for you to pick a road. Well, if they're harming our grandchildren, I'll have to kill them. And Epiphany toddles off to bed and crawls under it. <laughs> I have an odd family. All right, <laughs> time to feed my chicks before bed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Only this oh, game oh, could oh, go oh, from oh, an oh, existential oh. crisis to vomiting and <laughs> I love between this character Epiphany, so much. Between Epiphany and Relian both both chucking up their food, it's very interesting. Elian just had this nice dinner of suckling pig and roast beef and he's vomiting insects. It's, it's like the worst parts of cat dog. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to have you summarize what the <clears throat> next day will be as you are the hours are counting down. There, the city is in basically an uproar because yep. every corner you turn, somebody's Everything from really good jokes to somebody dumping a bucket of water on somebody's head, very, very lousy practical jokes, uh, are going on in the city. There are people running around dre dressed in jester's costumes with bells on the end of their hat tails, and there's just insanity going on throughout the entire city the next day. The inn is very full. Uh, you, in fact, you have to enact a few pleasant expulsion of some guests that get a little bit too drunk and start getting uh, irritable or whatever. So you have to be on your toes to keep them taken care of because it is the day that everybody gets drunk and nobody cares. So there is this pandemonium going on all up and down the streets as misrule hits. So is we'll just there, hide until the party. Yeah, all right. So <laughs> there's just, you're having to basically be a bouncer a lot in the end because people yeah. feel that over drinking is kind of the name of the game on such a day. Epiphany will attempt to fail and throw people out if it needs to. <laughs> <laughs> basically, however, it is chaos in the city. Is there anything practical you need to do or will we take us to the evening and you are now getting ready to get into your carriage and go. <clears throat> I, I think we should just cut to the carriage. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Anything mm -hmm. that Shepard needs to do, he would just do it in his room. As Vel arrives uh, at the appropriate hour in a, her elegant carriage, she is dressed as the Thieves' God Mask is how she is dressed for the evening. And she picks you up in her chauffeured carriage and takes you to the Castle Lantern 
location. And here is kind of what you will see when you arrive there. sparkly interesting so the orbs the orb the the ground it is night it is nighttime and all over the grounds are sparkling orbs about this big about the size of a head that are glistening and glowing in rainbows of colors they are floating about the butterfly gardens they are floating around the entry gardens where you come in the two big gates outside by where the family crests were, the big iron gates, have been flung open wide, and the big circular drive that comes up to the manor is now open, and lines of these carriages are coming in from one side and going out the other where their various chauffeurs are parking, or if it's a hired person, they'll be back later for them. But uh, there is this entire train of everybody that's who's who in Waterdeep is lined up in these carriages or strolling into the grounds in their costumes. You just see wealth everywhere you look. It is absolutely amazing. And the grounds just sparkle. There are like Japanese paper lanterns. There are these floating globes that illuminate the grounds that are sparkling and glistening everywhere. It is just an atmosphere of light and joy and um, happiness going on everywhere you look in the grounds. You eventually move up to the door. There are some doormen, livery doormen there. You also notice the grounds are well filled with the livery guards. They are dressed exactly as the ones who were at the tavern, but these footmen sort of individuals come out and open the carriage door, help the ladies down, etc. for each one of the nobility. There's quite a flood of them. They're able to handle two or three carriages at the same time. They've got so many people handling these, these duties. So you alight onto the grounds and you are ushered in to what is absolutely the world's most amazing party. The manor has been decorated to the highest degree. There are gold decorations everywhere. Once again, the images of Seamorph are everywhere you look. Um, you are able to spot the Lord and Lady bustling about, greeting people as they come in. They are dressed in glistening costumes of various sorts. Uh, I need to get a sheet up that I have. I'm trying to remember. Somewhere I had what they were. All right. First, you spot Victoro. Um, Castellanter, who is strutting about looking grand. He has flowing golden Shafani robes on. He is holding a golden scepter. Behind his head is a crown affixed to the back of his head with rays of the sun coming out. There is no doubt it is the rising sun of Lathander that he is dressed at. He has this total lord of the heavens sort of look to him. He is wearing a light mate, lightweight sort of plate, golden plate mail as part of this with this flowing toga sort of thing over the plate mail and the golden crown behind it. Amalia is seen in the crowds. She is wearing a diaphanous gown. There is golden trim all around the edges and on the cuffs of the thing. She, just like him, is carrying a golden scepter and has a golden halo on it 
uh, and with the sun image, a full sun image that is both on her crown and on the scepter, there's no doubt she herself is Theomorph. You see the twins running about having a wonderful time. They are dressed as Mileki and um, uh, Mili, the god of, the boy's the god of poetry, and the girl is the goddess of the forest. They, uh, the girl is dressed like a unicorn with a golden horn, and the boy is dressed in a toga and is carrying a golden harp. Likewise, you see about you uh, some of the individuals that you recognize around the, the edges of the things. You eventually are escorted out into the butterfly garden where at night, where the butterflies are not actually awake and are sleeping in the plants, there are actually little magical glowing butterflies that are lights that are flitting about the garden and the flowers all over this garden. There are enormous tables laid out that are like 30 feet long with golden tablecloths and huge platters of all kinds of roast meats and vegetables and things laid out all across a wonderful smell of things coming from this table. And people are already have plates that they are carrying, golden plates that they are carrying piled high with, with foods. You do notice that those that you are familiar with are being very circumspect and are admiring the food, but are not currently eating anything. They are taking precautions. Yeah. Is, is it safe to assume that we had a very, very large dinner before we came that's here? What we're, yeah, that's what we're gonna, <laughs> that's our story yeah. we're sticking to it. Mm -hmm. Are you insane? As you notice around you with the individuals that are partaking of the foods, at this point in time, no one seems to be getting ill or having any problems from the food. You notice a number, number of rather heavy set nobles who are eating quite thoroughly of the foods and nothing seems to be going wrong with them at all. They are enjoying it, gabbling. There are I mean, this is a party with five, like 500 yeah, people. Yeah. It is just people talking yeah. and pretending to be their gods everywhere. People are, are posing and doing poetry and things are spouting everywhere. Everybody's acting out the part of the thing. So how are you guys going to first do this at the party point before you start getting serious? You won't be getting serious. I have a though. very important question. Is Varys' Sea God costume better than Melanor's Sea God costume? Oh, God. Wow. <laughs> His costume, I think, was a little bit different than yours, but it, I, I don't remember what he was dressed at at the moment, so I'd have to look it up. But uh, anyway, mm. he is, yeah, he is basically like Neptune, more or less. He's carrying a trident as well, so I guess they're the same God. But yeah, he's um, he's he's he looks pretty similar. His costume is quite a bit different than yours, and it it has a lot more magic on it. He's got like swirls mm. of magic around it that he has has done. So there's like sea waves. You can actually see sea waves roiling over him and things as he's doing. Are that. are are there any other illustrations? Oh, I imagine, I mean, there's a limited number of gods and there's about 500 people yeah. at this party. So it would be given that almost every costume would have a duplicate somewhere, although it would be different in its presentation. There would be a repetition of many of the gods. Mariel starts to take note of her rivals. Bradley and <laughs> so, so <laughs> Yeah, I Captain imagine... also is looking at all the Time Aura ones. Sorry. I, I, imagine the, I imagine there are other Azuths then. I, not so likely on that because he is a, uh, a minion. He's a lesser theater. Yeah. Uh, so it's a little less likely. Mostly you see there are a few people that are dressed as various god servants. As a matter of fact, um, uh, Laerol herself. Lajra. Laerol herself is dressed as one of the 
seven sisters. She is not dressed as Mistra herself. She is dressed basically as herself, but in full costume. She that has. Makes sense, you know. yeah. She just put on her ceremonial garb. That's all she yeah, did. Basically. I mean, she's the open lord. She can do that. Right. She's going as herself. That should be against the rules. <laughs> I mean, she is. She, she is. is one of the se- She is one of Mistra's chosen. Right. I, I, no, I, I, I get you that she's the child of a god, and that counts. But still. <laughs> That's cheating. It just feels like cheating. <laughs> all she did was put on her ceremonial garb. She goes in for like she does at the temple. That's all she did. I mean, she's minimal busy. She, she, can't be, she, she can't be bothered to get an extravagant costume for one night. And she's there the may Lord. be <laughs> there may be ulterior reasons that she is dressed as herself. It's probably more functional. So also, also I noticed someone else was dressed up as a zoo. Check was the there? NPC fighter list. Oh, was there was there one? Yeah, yeah, Vajra. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, she <clears throat> she's she's basically, yeah, she's she's playing the part of of the god of wizard. She's wearing red robes. Illusion of fire encircles her as she moves. So she's she's got swirly fire, and she's carrying a book of spell uh, a fake book of spells that she's carrying in this thing so yeah i would walk by her and just uh mumble loudly faker (laughs) you notice vincent oh my god you notice vincent trent he is dressed very oddly he is he's dressed as a furry um he is in a tiger costume he basically this striped tiger full furry costume that he is wearing in it and he is basically malar god of the hunt hey he's going as himself too (laughs) uh jalester is dressed as helm who is his patron god god of protection he is wearing lightweight plate mail, golden symbol of an eye on the front of the, the mail. Jarlaxle is dressed in a, like a foam suit sort of thing. And he is dressed as Lolf, not surprisingly. The goddess of trickery. Basically, he it has a full illusion on him of this beautiful woman with six arms. He doesn't play it as a spider. He plays it more as a, you might picture the Hindu god that has multiple (coughs) arms. That's more the way he is doing this image where it is a beautiful woman with multiple arms and walking. Altogether, he has eight appendages, but he is supposedly lull. Hello, mother. Durnan is there, and he is dressed as Oladamara, the god of revelry. He has a tankard in his hand that he's swinging around. There's not actually any liquid in it. There's a like a fake substance in there that makes it look like there's liquid in it. And he's wearing a toga uh, and has this fake glass of wine or tankard or whatever that he is holding. Dabble has come as Sashelis, the elven god of the sea. Uh, oh, no, that, that should have, I've got that wrong. That should actually have been Melnor that was dressed as that. That's the god of the sea. Dabble, I'll have to look that up. I've got something wrong on that one. Dabble is something else. I've got the two of them swapped there, so I'll have to see what I've got wrong, because I don't even see Melnor on this list. So I must have left one off and gotten the two of them combined. But anyway... Uh, so I'll get that corrected by next week. Melanor is the one who's dressed as the god of the sea with blue tunic, green cape, trident, and this, these, this magic illusion of waves that are swirling and slushing around him with like sea foam sort of things on them. And around his head is this like crown of sea foam that is on it. So the costumes are amazing all over the place. So what are you going to do as you start your evening? In the last few minutes we've got here, what, how will you start out with your niceties for the evening? Uh, 
Cashin is going to uh, go with go and meet all the other luck gods and probably uh, try, probably try and convince them to do some do a little bit of gambling. Yep. Uh, actually, you would probably get a, <laughs> uh, a table going where all the luck gods would gather together and try to to test the luck. Oh, I, I uh, mentioned earlier, but did not go into detail, that Mert is probably one of the most humorous costumes there because Mert is fairly broad. He's got a large stomach, and he is dressed as Joaquin, the goddess of trade. He is dressed in a beautiful Grecian gown. He has a long, very obviously fake, he didn't try to make it look real, it's like yarn, golden wig with a circle of um, uh, uh, coins around the head and a necklace of coins around the neck. And, and obviously he is going as the goddess of wealth and trade because of his status in the things. So I did, I did fail to mention what he was dressed as. So yeah, you would find a lot of these individuals, even Mert would join in a bit because he's feeling very jolly tonight. He's having fun. And so uh, we can find out if you want what kind of gambling goes on. Do you want to try to gamble tonight? Yes. Pull your book out, Apple. <laughs> we knew that was coming. I should have had it out and ready. Noemi, Noemi, Noemi. I think Shepard would join in as well. Death to the end of all. Yeah, let's go. Okay, so. Interesting. That's another one it. of those. Same thing. Yeah, that's another Modest one of those. 41 to 80 is boring. Yeah. Break even. Oh, oh, 24. Not. Oh. Epiphany so... will give it a shot. <laughs> so we might not be able to do the shepherds right now. Because it says you gain conscious. No, 24 is you. Oh, you make an enemy. Hmm. Oh, no. Convenient. Thematic. <laughs> we become enemies. <laughs> Yeah. No, you make the same enemy. Oh, what did you? Who did you two piss off? You make an enemy. <laughs> this person, business, or organization is now hostile to you. The DM determines the offended party. You decide how you offended them. Thematic for the night. My my vote is Cassian. <laughs> they made enemies with Cassian. <laughs> uh, not not anyone. Else. No. <laughs> you are definitely noticed by members of the Castellanters, and they, because it is Epiphany. <laughs> Something about Epiphany suddenly sets off the Castle Lanterns, and at, whenever they come close to you, they look at you and they are angry. There is something that they see in you that they no longer enjoy being around. And you find them trying to shuffle you off into the corners and edges of the room. With the shepherd, the with, the shepherd? Oh. with the shepherd, one of them leans over with a smirk and says, I see history is going to repeat itself. I grab him by the neck and I shove him right to the wall. Dare to say that out loud, sir. Two guards interpose themselves with spears between you. Unhand the Lord Castellanter immediately. <laughs> and then um, Mariel's hands come up to the shepherd and bonus action mental. The goal is to sneak, not siege. What is shepherd? I, it, I, my hand twitches. To give it a little bit of a squeeze before I do let go. My Lord Castellanter, please forgive him. He's had a little too much to drink. Who are you? I am uh, Lady in Waiting Mariel Zelotion, servant of Lady Nakrinokare. I don't know who you 
are, but that's not who you are. I will uh, step up and go, if you were about to make accusations, perhaps this should be done another time. I would not want to have anything else ha go ha wrong now, do we? Forgive after all, me. we are all friends here, after all. Of course we are, and the evening is to be one of joy and celebration. Here's to the lords and their success. And he lifts a glass of wine and drinks it and smiles at you in a way that would set your teeth on edge. I will smile back, giving the most... Uh, draconically toothy grin possible and uh, just go um, but my lord after all this is your wonderful celebration I would not want to take away from it I too am celebrating my newly appointed citizenship of Waterdeep I will come deal with my people right now forgive them everyone is a little bit on edge a lot of revelry a lot of good memories and a lot of you know Yes, come, come along, that friend. They can hold their liquor better, and he looks pointedly at Shepard. Good evening. And he moves away with a kind of a look over his shoulder, like, you'll get yours. Enjoy what time you have. At that out loud. And I'm going to put a hand, I'm going to put, raise a hand that has the cloak over Shepard and be like, nope, go with me. Oh, really somehow, to... somehow there are three drow hands. <laughs> <laughs> Madam DM, quick question: um, Are there any like braziers or lanterns or anything like lighting the courtyard? Oh, really want to set this guy's cloak over the place. Yeah. Really do want to set this guy's cloak on fire. Not really want to set this guy's cloak on fire. Don't do it. 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 Do it. Do it. <laughs> Believe me, I want to dump a vat of wine on this guy. Oh my not. god! Like, it wouldn't no, be an no. attack. No one would see me do it, but nope. I would very Come. much like to start up some water spectacles and then accidentally drop a bottle of whatever. No, 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 no! Just keep doing less it. attention. Less attention. Continue. Don't. For the love I'm of the people to... we're dressed as, stop. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to calmly keep my arm around the shepherd and coax him to let us take a walk. Let us try to uh, put back our put back our good faces. Marielle is on the other side and also walking with the shepherd, but instead her eyes are trailing around, trying, almost looking a little frantically to see if she can spot the twins. Well, the twins are bouncing throughout the crowd. You see them on and off for the whole evening. They are thoroughly having a ball with their costumes. Um, uh, the little girl is, is bouncing in a way like she's a unicorn, trying to act like a unicorn, and the boy is pretending to play his harp. He actually has a little bit of ability on the harp, kind of like a child who's had two years with a violin sort of levels. Um, we live with mm -hmm. one. Uh, so actually, good. ours are pretty good. Um, well, <laughs> time time for some well in, well intentioned child abduction. <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> let's leave. Let's leave the kidnapping for the for the next time. Quite as, literal kidnapping. As we end the evening tonight, the evening has dragged on. You have been there for maybe an hour of pleasantries. Um, the Lord and Lady of the House finally, like, ring a golden bell later in the evening, and they call the crowd to attention, and they motion to their servants uh, to come in from the various buildings that are all around the edges of the garden and so forth, and lines of servants come out uh, dressed in livery with enormous pitchers of wine that and glasses they're carrying out these golden glasses and these golden pitchers of wine as the evening has progressed and the lord and lady stand up on a dais a small area a small platform that raises them a little above the others 
And uh, as they are standing by a table laden with food that they've been eating from, they say, Nobles of Waterdeep, welcome to our house and to all that we have prepared for you. Let us celebrate the gods and our solemn day that we will celebrate. Let us all welcome God's day. And the servants begin to pour wine into these elegant goblets and serve them out to the various nobles. And there's so many of the servants that it's done very quickly in spite of the fact there's just crowds of these people. They very quickly distribute it. And then uh, the Lord and Lady lift their cups and say, to the gods! And they drink their glass, and obviously you watched and saw that the servants did not pour the glass that they were holding. They were already holding a glass of wine. <coughs> and they lift it in toast to the gods and expect everyone will do the same. And all around you, nobles are indeed lifting their goblets to the gods and toasting the gods. Kashin makes sure that he is uh, well be he is uh, unseen from all this and he uh, quietly disposes of his in a nearby uh, planter. Very good. I look for Ca Lord Castellanter to see if he's looking at me and the, if I get catch him doing so, I will just purposely just pour it out right in front of me. He is very astute pointedly avoiding looking at both you and Epiphany. He is keeping his eye contact off of you because he is like not wanting to see you. I need so, to do a roll. Okay. I'm going to continue to mantra remember we are uh -oh. here, remember uh -oh. why we are uh -oh. here, remember why we uh -oh. are here. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> the unwisdom roll. Damn it. <laughs> well, this, this I mean, gonna, we you were just left to do die. something, so... Say what? Sorry, what was that? You you were telling... You were on about us how not to yeah. mess with crap. And now you were going to well, mess with crap. Well, everybody's going to freaking die. Like, <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm going to... No, I was going to do something anyway. Like, I'm not letting Oof. so many people die. What, what, what were you saying, Gore? Hmm? Did you say something, Brett? Oh, I, I just said that. No, you got a low wisdom score. You or low wisdom uh, roll. You got to do it now. I'm um, still gonna try to try to talk sense, persuade the two of them to keep coming with her. She's yeah, trying to get them to the hallway where they need to go. <laughs> Epiphany drops concentration and erupts from Marielle. That'll do it. Uh... Do not drink anything. Thaumaturgy. I'm going to pretend to be shocked that this is happening to my servant and back the up. Thankfully, Kashin is wearing a mask because his stunned look is hidden. So the the what the the way that the design that had been provided, instead of being elegantly wrapped, now it like billows around him. <laughs> All the elastic expands, and the hair is now sticking out in all directions. All right. As oh, numerous... regular epiphany in a fur bikini. Yeah. yeah. The image is in my mind now. All right. <laughs> As we leave Sorry. Epiphany has erupted. At the same Let's do time... Let's do it. Let's do it. At the same time, you notice that the Lord and Lady, after drinking their goblets of wine, step off the dais and move away from the group of the crowd. They are disappearing like through some bushes and off to another section of the manor. They have very purposely moved away from everything that is going on. Within 10 minutes around you, you start to see people fanning themselves and doing various things. And effects of the wine begin to take effect as numerous lords and ladies start getting dizzy and 
sliding to the ground or sinking into chairs. They don't seem to just be croaking on the spot. They seem to like being going into a stupor. How many would you say like was Epiphany's sudden outbursts able to save? Like how many like stop drinking or drop their cups in shock? Quite, quite a number of them. Let's see there. Let me literally give a uh, 1D percentage roll. Yeah, nice roll. I'm, nice I'm roll. actually going to do a 500 <laughs> roll and just do it okay. that way. Woo, so uh, it's a, a roll. Can it be at advantage if Barris also <laughs> starts advantage. going? Don't drink it. Don't drink it. Advantage? What? There's no advantage. There's no advantage on hundos. Hundos. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> uh, you say 208 people out of the five. Yeah. Lots of people look at you. They are they aren't afraid of the cup as much as they are afraid of you. And a lot of the ladies especially scream and throw their cups at you and run from you. So you have wine all over you as <laughs> as this goes. So you basically have Pretty much happening all at once is chaos. People start screaming, yeah. cups get thrown, people are sinking to the ground, the Lord and Lady disappear from view, and various a whole bunch of these liveried servants are going to the various individuals who are fainting in chairs or whatever, and are acting like they are concerned with them, are lifting them up carrying them over to a sedan or to uh, lifting them up, fanning the ladies, acting like they are caring for them. A lot of these fainting people are being carried off of the scene. So you just have people scattering, people being carried off, and this is the scene that we will take up with next time, is basically chaos has erupted, things are going to be happening. Can we see the twins? Yes, they are. The twins are are running from not from you particularly. They are running from all the screaming people, and they they yeah. are just running. They are not headed anywhere in particular, but they are in the garden. I just want them to run up to you and say, "Barney." <laughs> <laughs> I love I love you. Um. All right, so this is where we will take up next time is as the chaos oh, has well. begun. Erupted. Um, I would say that since I'm still with Shepard, I'm pretty much just going to grab his arm and go, start leading me. Yeah, basically, so I will say that you have somewhat of a cover in that people are reacting to Epiphany. And they are not paying attention to most of you. Now, Varus is out there waving his arms saying, don't drink it, don't drink it. And He's they might not waving his arms. That was me knocking drinks out of hands. Well, the point is the yeah. same. They're paying a little bit of attention to Varus. Mostly they are reacting to Epiphany's appearance. So <laughs> eight foot tall, like mostly naked, red, right. multi-limbed thing, screaming, don't drink anything. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Um, I'm going, up, eh? I would also take the moment to shoot a message to uh, Relian, uh, Varys, and Cassian, since they're not near me, near me, and be like, start making your way for the basement. I would actually probably be near Epi, and it says, What the devil? Oh, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I would, say, I would say they would take a different route for you two, because that way it's not as obvious that we're all going together. We can you talk would, about that would, after and, the game, though. Yep, and yeah. you go in through the, either through the mudroom or whatever you choose to do, but you go into <laughs> the house, and there are people laid out on the floors in neat rows. The servants have very carefully put them. Uh, and I will tell you that if you stop briefly to examine one, they are all breathing. What time but is they're it? being laid out. So Crap, I'll can I... a medical way. Could... That's where we will end mm, tonight. I don't want to start so... Okay. All right. So, Relian, <laughs> give us our uh, 
farewell for the evening. What do you have on your mind? Well, people, it's a good time. It's a good time for it, but it's finally happened. I've finally lost my mind. If found, don't bother returning it. It wasn't working properly anyway. <laughs> <laughs> like the guy from Hook that actually lost his marbles. All right. With that, we'll say good night from Crone's Crucible and stick with us next week. There's all hell going to break loose. Oh. 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 Yeah. <laughs> good night. Good night, everybody. I thought you were better than that. Yeah. <laughs>